everybody. Welcome to Free Motion Fridays with Kate Quinn. I'm always excited to be here and share cool quilting tips with you and hopefully enhance your ability to learn a design that you may want to learn. You'll notice right now that I do not have a glider on and the reason I, I took it off is I want to show you some things. So I was testing this morning with my thread. I, I'm using the same thread that we used last week, which is the isocord thread, and then this variegated superior thread on the back, which is fantastico. Both of them are 40 weight. And as I was sewing, I was really noticing that my needle was kind of sloppily pushing down into my fabric and it wasn't giving me the good stitch that I wanna have. So of course, my first thought was, Hmm, maybe my needle is dull, I need to change it. After I changed my needle, it was still performing poorly. And so I was doing my little checks and trying to understand what, what was going on. And I realized that I did not have my straight stitch needle plate on. I had that open plate. And because I was using a thinner scrap batting, it was really pushing a lot of fabric down into those areas. So with this machine, I can have left, center, or right needle position in a straight stitch with some additional support around where the needle is punching through. So I'm gonna put this back on. On this machine, I can just press the button down here. It's going to raise this up and I'll just go like that. If I press my lockout button too, that's also what I should do just to keep anything from moving around. I will take the bobbin out also so that that bobbin is not going to get trapped in anything and have a weird path. This cover comes right with it, so when I line everything up, it should fit in there just perfectly. Okay, make sure you push it down. One of the things I like about this particular machine, this is the 9450, is I don't have any tools required when I do that. One thing I do want is after I go ahead and tell my machine that I've done everything I'm supposed to do because it's, it's talking to me. I just want to get that bobbin thread up. Well, I guess I got to put it in first, huh? <laughs> All right, so put that in there and I'm going to leave the long tail. I'm not going to cut that, but I will feed it through there just to kind of hold it in place. Okay, and this way I can actually do two things. I want this thread here to be through the foot. So I'm gonna pull it like that. And then once I put my needle down and up, I can sweep this through there and then that bobbin thread now is also up on the top and long enough for me to pick it up. Whenever I'm working with free motion, it's pretty rare that I'm gonna use that scissor button unless I'm being lazy. Now that this is all sorted out, I'm gonna go ahead and put my glider on. I've already cleaned it today and I will line it up just because I can. This is my zero position. So this wide dotted line is the one that will go on that right there. And then I'll also line it up front to back so that my needle is positioned right in the center. That only matters if I'm using this for piecing, that this is aligned perfectly. If I'm just using it for free motion, fabric's gonna cover that up and who cares, right? That's what the ruler work glider is for. But since I do switch back and forth, it's better to have this properly positioned so that later on, if I am using the lines, I won't accidentally use lines that are not correctly established. Okay, so right now, glider is clean, machine is tested and cleaned and threaded. I've put a new needle in right here. This is a 9014 top stitch needle and in fact it's this one right here superior top stitch needle so that's what I'm using and let me show you my little scrappy sample of what we're gonna try to do we're gonna do two things I think we're gonna do this and some ideas for how you travel with this one and then this one is kind of messy but this is the one that I was having the thread trouble with and I thought we could just do some of these as random fills and how you travel and some ideas for making it bigger too. So those are our two ideas for today. So always test your thread. Once you thread your machine, before you put your quilt up, make sure that you test it. So for example, we just did a lot of adjustments right here. I might wanna just 
pick up that bobbin thread and just stitch a little bit, especially since I have two very different colors. I wanna see that the needle is performing. It's not pushing any fabric down. And I can tell because it has a good feel. Like before it was going thunk, 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 and you could kind of feel a drag as the needle was pushing that fabric down and then having to come back up. So here I can move really smoothly. I don't feel any resistance from the needle. I don't have any odd sound. Okay, and it looks good on the top. So let's see what happens on the back real quick. So it's right in this area right here that we just stitched. Okay, so like right there, I'll show you. And I see a little bit, actually not too bad, a little bit of dottiness. So what that tells me is I'll just raise up my, my top tension number and it's gonna pull a little bit more on the top, but it isn't bad. Let's see if we can get you right there to see better. I can see just a little bit of the blue thread from the top, but not very much. So just put it up one or two little clicks and I think I'm ready to go. Okay, so here's our fabric for today. And we'll kind of vaguely split this in half just so we have a little idea of how much space that we're gonna use. All right. So let's make sure I can see all your comments. Good morning, good morning. It's nice to see you guys from California, Maryland, Arizona, Mount Vernon, and Nan is here. So great to have you guys here. Okay, when we start out with that first design, it's really a great warm up too. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda draw it on the inside for a minute, that way it won't be busy. You're just gonna make a little partial curl. We're looking for something kind of round, like part of a circle. And then when I come out, I'm gonna vaguely echo it. And I can go as far as I want. Like I could go here and I could echo back there, right? You're in charge of that. Once I get that third echo, I'm gonna do one, one, two, three, now I need to start thinking about where do I want to echo next? I can pop a little arc right here, right from that position. One, two, <coughs> excuse me. You're going to see that's going to move me that direction. If I want to move a different direction, when I'm on that third one, what I might want to do is maybe travel back a little bit and then the arc comes off of that one and then I can push my design a little bit more that way. One, two, and then here. One, two, and then a little hook. One, two, and one other thing. Directionality was what we just talked about. The next piece is size management. I don't necessarily want everything to be the same size, and more than that, I'm not really sure I could make everyone the same size. So if I make them different sizes on purpose, I'm going to be better off. So here I'll make a little one. So this whole little section here will be a little smaller than this one. If I need to get back over here, just echo one more time, okay? And then that can be your little travel right there. You can always just echo once. If you then need to get somewhere else, echo over again. One, two, three three, travel a little bit, one, two, three. I can always partially travel and I can also curl out to give me a little bit of distance from this part of the design. Just follow back a little bit and then make your hook. So let's go ahead and we'll work on that one. And we'll just fill up this space right here. You can see it in real time. If I had a seam somewhere, you could go ahead and just tack this off right in your seam with a few tacking stitches and then cut your threads. Let me grab my scissors. Oh, always out of reach, right? I wish they made mind meld scissors so that if you told them what you wanted, they would come closer. 
Okay, here we go. Let's turn it this way so you can see. All right, so let's just start. We'll put a, a little round thing, right? A little something. And use the foot as your spacer. And then just another one right here. Let's make that little smaller one that we mentioned, so a little curl. And we want to get over to the other side, so we'll just make another one. Here we'll travel back a little bit so that we can make this one kind of come a little further to this other side. Now, I don't have to go all the way back down there. Do you see that? I can just stop right there and I can just come back here so that I can move this way. That decision is up to me. Eventually, it'll all get filled. So then I'll travel back just a little bit. And here I went over. If this was my boundary, I could just dip in and go across. Okay, so what do you think so far? How are we doing? So we showed a couple of things. We showed variation in size, travel in the ditch. If you want to, we just kind of echoed it a little bit so we could get out of that right here. Cause if this was your boundary, I, I mean, I didn't stop very good, but you know, you'd want to sew right across your seam and then maybe this was a gap. So you would fill that in. Okay. Now we can continue working here and come back this way if we want to. Or if you wanted to come down here and fill a little bit before going up, that's totally your call. One of the ways that you can do it, if you want to, is just travel back a little bit on the existing design. And I can go this way. And if that puts me on the side I don't want to be on, I'll just go again. Here, we'll just come out of that little dip so we can fill it like that. Now, here we went this way. So this is the side we started on and this is one, two. We're ending up on the opposite side. So if I start here, we should end up on the opposite side, right? So one, two, three, and I can travel a little bit. And I'm gonna start on this side, so I'm gonna end up on the, the opposite side. Two. Oh, getting close to the edge there. Three, and then maybe something a little bit bigger. And then we can just fill in if we need to move over. So right here, this is kind of the edge. You're really close to your boundary. Your quilt top should extend beyond that. And now we can just work and fill in this last bitty space right here. And I can just echo right here to kind of get me over there a little bit. bit to get me out of the hole there and then we can get back to our pattern all right and then here we just have this little gap so I'll probably just fill that in with some echoes 
one, two, and then we'll just dip and fill. All right, so that is, I think, a pretty easy background fill. You can see it doesn't have to be perfect. It could go different directions. You can make the swirl cross over itself or not. Here, we started on this same side, so there's no connection there, whereas on this one, we crossed over, so it kind of has that base right there. You can see it right there, too. So either of those, you can have that openness, or you can cross over, and I would mix and match those, and that's mostly based on just whichever direction I want to travel. So if I need to move one way or the other, I just randomly decide, okay, I'm going to cross over if I need to. So don't be afraid of that. It's no big deal. But this would make a really great fill. It can be done bigger. It can be done smaller. If you want to make bigger spaces, but you kind of struggle with um, your spacing, one of the things you can do is put one of these ruler echo guides on. And then instead of using basically your foot as your spacer, you can use a little bigger space with the edge of this as well. Something that can also be um, used for this is using the um, bowl foot or the spoon foot, which is, let's see if I have it here. Sometimes if you're working with free motion and you want to have, let's see, where is my foot box? There it is. Oh, it's hiding way back there. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me grab it. Whoa, more tools. Looks like this. It's on the back side. Okay, here we go. You can see it right there. Using one of these. You could use this, and then you can either use the edge of this as the guide or any of the lines in there as your spacer. So this can also be a style of foot that is used when you want to make those spaces just a little bit bigger. This is just a free motion foot. There are free motion feet like this with a hopping foot with the little spring or there is just the floating foot that you just attach this to the anklet and either of those would work very well. Okay. So let's see if we have any questions so far. All right, so there's no questions right now. So I'm just gonna keep on going. We'll go ahead and do the next design and we'll draw that out and then we'll talk about it and then we'll stitch it out. So these would be something that could be an awesome all-over design. You could just fill in a large space with this. This would stitch up very quickly and it's very forgiving. So, all right, the next one, let's get my big fat marker out. I love these because these help you have a lot of friction. So when you're practicing, they're really, really useful for that. Let's see if I can Get us something a little plainer so we can practice. That little scrap is missing. Oh, talk on it. I just dropped my echo guide under the table. Hang on, because we are going to use that. Oh my goodness. We won't be using that one because he is way under there and I cannot get him out. <laughs> so we'll just have to use something else. It's fine. Let's just keep on playing. Okay, so our next one is essentially this is like a clamshell, not a clamshell, Baptist fan. We're just going to kind of come across. And the difference between this one and this one is that we're going to kind of square off these edges. So when we make the next one, we can make it anywhere. We can make it right here. We could just start right there, travel, and then this one, even though he's not connected there, he'd just come out, right? And I can make him touch. That is part of this design. You know, it's okay if he touches. And then here, just go to the next one, travel, right? And the next one. So because these are connected, I can travel anywhere I want. I can go this way or I can go this way. And then I'm going to put this one right there. If this was the boundary right here, as I come up, I could just stop 
and either I could come back in and I could start the next one there. We always want to sort of put this part of the first circle at a connection right here. I think that definitely looks good. I like that that kind of changes our direction. And then travel out. And if I need another one or I need to, to go a different way, just kind of lean your circle a little bit so that he's kind of leaning a way that you want to go. Right? Then he's kind of a little bit in this direction. And then your next one can be in that direction. Okay? So that's kind of where we're going with this design. And let me just do this. I don't want it to be too messy so that when we are trying to sew it out, if we turn it over, I want you to be able to see it. So this is just a piece of fabric. And you can see it, it's going to erase pretty good. Now I could erase it more, you know, if I needed to. I, I have lint rollers and I have a little brush that I could use that's clean and that'll get a little bit more of this off. But that's good enough for right now, right? Okay. Could I do this with a ruler? Yes, I could. But a ruler is going to take a lot more time. And we're not looking for that level of precision in this kind of design. We're looking for a fill that can be fast and easy and flexible and that I could change on a dime. So these are going to be a little bit flatter. This first part, it can't be so tight. It needs to be kind of like more like a half of a circle. So we're going to flatten it out a little bit and then travel a little bit flat. Okay. And we're going to try to echo this visually in our mind. That's what we're doing. We're echoing that. So if you have some space, you want to try to keep that space. Don't worry about if it's perfect. We don't care. We don't need it to be perfect. We just need it to be approximate. Okay. So I'm going to come back up just a little bit and I'm going to do a little flat half circle right here. And I'll travel on the design. Okay, and then I'll just come out here. And this will be my next one. Travel and follow. Now, if I'm out here and I don't want to be, I want to be in there, you have lots of options. If you're comfortable, you could just sew back on your line a little bit. This design has got lots of overstitching, so it's okay if you have overstitching. Travel, and again. Okay, so here I got this nice little spot right here. So I'll travel over just a little bit and just try to make him come out a little bit. We need that roundness so that we kind of are differentiating. We don't want it too flat right there because we are trying to create that curve. Okay, so again, right here, we can go ahead and put it right there or I can travel out a little further I don't have to put it right at that corner there. I can make it a little bit flatter like this. And you can travel around there. That can help it not be too matchy-matchy. I can tell my elbow is sticking to the table. So I might have to lift up my body and get in a little closer to the work. Because right there, I could tell my arm was sticking right on there. If your quilt's bigger, you're probably not going to have that problem. This piece is pretty small. Okay, and then we'll travel a little bit right there. So when you're sewing these little arcs, try not to stop in the middle of anyone. 
as you're doing this, try to get all the way to your stop point before you make any changes to your body or your hand positions. So let's come over here a little bit. We're getting a little matchy matchy. So we'll just start over here and we'll kind of make a little flat circle right there. We want to sort of change it up a little bit. This space is pretty small. I could try and put a little baby right there if I wanted to. Let's see if we can get it. But I also don't want to crowd the space too much. So right there, that would be about what you could get and you're not going to get the top of that. So here we'll just kind of echo out a little bit and follow this one. Okay, and I'll come back a little bit. We don't want to be right on that same seam every time. So let's go ahead and we'll just come out a little further and we'll start another one. That'll help break that up so we don't get our seam right in the same place all the time. Okay, and this way we'll travel up a little bit here. And same thing, we kind of need to break up that seam a little bit. Okay, so I've only done two. Any rules? I don't need a rule. I can just go ahead and I'll just scoot over here. And I can maybe put another one in there later if I want to or not. Now I can got a hole over here. So if I want to, if this was the boundary, I could travel or I could come back on this side and fill this corner or I can continue filling all of this and come back to that later. So path is always something that you wanna evaluate. If you can easily travel around, I can just come over here and right from there, I can start another one. And if this was the boundary, I could just come over and you would hide that in the seam right there. This part of this would, if this was the seam, you could hide any of that travel stitching right in your seam right there. So we'll come up. Okay, and same thing. Then we'll come over here a little bit, kind of make this one fill in that little space right there. If that was my boundary, I could just echo right there. And then this is probably the last one for this side, out to the boundary, and then just come across the top Right here would be that ditch, and we can just travel across to that other side. And then we'll just pick up the design and fill it in this way to fill up that space. So, let's see. So what do you think? Do you think this is fun? You got different directions. It's kind of moving all over the place. That's something that I like, that it's not too only going this way, only going that way. Oh, I'm right on the edge here. It's not good. So part of my plan in this was to go ahead and put that echo guide on. And here we'll just connect these and we'll start working right here. And because that's narrow, I'm gonna just do one more to kind of get me out of that little ditch right there. And then we can start another one right here. So I was gonna use that echo guide and try to make a little bit of a wider space, but since it kind of vanished, I'm not sure if I could. I don't wanna spend time looking under there while we're on a live broadcast. <laughs> so travel.
look out ahead of you, try and keep it as nice and smooth as you can. And these will get easier as you do more of them. I think when you start, it is hard to get them to behave because they are not circles. You know, you're trying to follow something that's a little bit imperfect. So as we get better, you will be able to do that much more efficiently. Okay, so we're kind of on this outer boundary. What would make sense to me at this point is rather than try to start a new one right there, is maybe follow this around a little bit. And now we can make this one here and work on filling it down this way. And then I would just continue this pattern here. Even if it's off of the edge, I would just keep going because you want to fill this in. So maybe something down here as you come around this boundary can help to fill in that last little bit right there. I'll show you. If this was your boundary, we can just travel in the ditch right here. So this would be fully ditched now. And then we can just be done right there. It's a little tight right there, but this is another one. This is another bottom circle. And this one, if that gap's too big, you can always come in and put another little bit in there. And I think it's okay to have this part be a little bit more open. This is going to be like a little puffy pillow in the center there for all of these, whereas these longer pieces are just going to be a little bit more open. And then if you had anything left over on your edges, here, you can just fill in. Okay, and then let's see. If I needed another one, I could follow this one in and come over right here. And that's another one right there. And that would let us fill in any last spaces right there. Come out to your boundary and travel. Done. So that's kind of some edge work right here that would look like you were just filling it in. It just follows this pattern a little bit. I'll just cut this real quick. Let's see if we can come out just a little bit more so you can see it. Right, so remember what we said, does it have to be perfect? I think it looks awesome. And in this case, the variegated thread, I think, really actually hides it. I think the purple, it looks good, especially the one that is a little bit more open. I think this one looks good. This one, you can tell this one's like a little wonky. This is what happens here when they stretch out a little too much. He's longer this way than a circle, so he looks more like an oval. So, and that's because we tried to, you know, fill in another one. I think when you try to make them go too far, then it starts to get a little less round and it loses its shape. Like, I think this one looks good. Um, I think this one looks good. This one, you know, so you're going to have some that are going to have a mind of their own and some that are going to behave. And I'm okay with that. But I do think that thread matters. So when we look at this side, I think it's much less obvious with the variegated thread because your eye goes in and out. So you, this yellow is really vibrant and it pulls your eye towards it. So if you have areas where it's irregular, your eye is moving in and out and you don't notice it as much. 
that's just some ideas for how that thread can really make a difference and some different choices that you have. This is just two fills. It's kind of a short day today, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it up there. I am getting packed up and getting ready for the Salt Lake City Quilt Festival. So if you are going, I will see you there. If you're in class, I will be in the classroom the whole time. If you haven't signed up, there is still room in classes. I have beginning free motion, which is more along the style of this. It's called doodle quilting style. And we're just gonna go through a couple of things and mostly it's to get people rid of their fear and get some ideas about how to move and move smoothly. And that's really the biggest thing that will advance people's free motion is if they can get rid of that and just start moving comfortably. So we'll be working on that in that class. And then there's um, ruler classes and some more advanced design classes. So if you're interested in that, still room to sign up. I'd love to see you. Have a great week. Know that tomorrow, um, not tomorrow, Sunday, I will be available and will be doing my class, my ruler class on So Steady's Facebook page at three o'clock Mountain Time. But next Friday and next Sunday, I will not be here. And then from the 25th through the 10th of, of August, I will be on vacation. So I will not be available at all. I will not have any new content um, put out during that time. So just make a note of that in your calendar. Please don't text me and say, I can't find you because I will not be here. <laughs> so have a wonderful week and we'll see you later. And if you have the kids starting school, my daughter today is the first day of her junior year. So she was looking beautiful today and pretty excited and also hating it. And, you know, I wish all of our new students, children and grandchildren today as they're getting ready for the start of school, summer, maybe winding down for some of them. Um, I wish them the best. So happy quilting and enjoy your week. I will talk to you later.